every time we share these public broadcasts, we're sharing them with more and more people. Now it's 380 something people. So lovely to see everybody. And here, my dad made me some tea, which I thought was quite lovely. So we're back. We're now back on our public scope. And I'm really tired. But we'll go through some things that were interesting. Does anyone know? Hello again. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Who said this, mate? I used to date Hispanic guys, but now I prefer consensual. Does anyone, uh, does anyone know who said that? I used to date Hispanic guys, but now I prefer consensual. No. <laughs> It's actually really funny. No, it's um, it was Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer said that. If anyone, uh, good to see you too, my friend. Welcome back, Colibri. All right, who who said this one? Behind every successful rap billionaire, is as double a rich, a Jewish man. Behind every successful rap billionaire is a Jewish man twice as rich. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> JC Tupac. <laughs> it could have easily been them. Yeah, could have easily been them. It was it was Trevor Noah, but same deal. Um, Who said this? What kind of world do we live in where a totally cute white girl can't say chink on network television? No Tifa. <clears throat> Who said that? What kind of world do we live in where a totally cute white girl can't say chink on network television? It was either Donald Trump, Milo Yiannopoulos, Amy Schumer, or Sarah Silverman. What kind of world do you live in where a totally cute white girl can't say chink on network television? Donald Trump, Sarah, Sarah Silverman. There you go. It's, it's, it's sort of, that one's actually not that funny. But... All right, so. Yeah, she's pretty funny. I am the Ken doll from the underworld, is what Trump says, is what Trump, what Milo says here. Um, social taboos for the past 15 years have all come from the progressive left. My criticism sometimes of Milo is when he identifies himself with the right, when he's not, he's about as right as I am, <laughs> which makes him wrong. No, no. But his primary focus, as far as I can see, is against those who want to enforce their will on other people. So I, I would submit he is anti-authoritarian. That would probably be his primary motive. And that's my equally primary motive, I'd say. If anyone tells me what to do, I will not only do the opposite. Yeah, he's pro-West, just like Kevro. Kevro's back. So, you know, he's, uh, yeah, he is. But no, there there are some views he holds which I find abhorrent, and that's, that's fine. Like, if we're gonna, the prop, here's the thing. This is this is this is a message to my side. The 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 best way, and I've I've given a scope. I gave a scope on this a month and a half ago. If you want to if you want to defeat conservatives, what you do is you listen to them. I I I just it's like that's all you have to do. It's so easy, right? You just have to listen to them and go. You know what? I don't agree with you, but I respect your right to hold the belief. And it's like, that's it. All of a sudden, they're your best friend. I'm like, this is amazing. Now we can get stuff done together, right? Because what's the other option? The, what the fake left or the authoritarian left, it's really the authoritarian left, right? The fake left. What, what it tries to do is force its will on you. Now, for me, Trump's not right wing. No, he's not. Um, f for, me, f for me, what the left want isn't really that bad because I agree with like 80% of it anyway, right? Except for like the ridiculous, like, you know, um, we hate men and identity politics and all that crap, no. But, but in terms of the progressive desires that I want, right? You know, reparations and gay marriage and 
um, equality of everyone. You know, all these all these things that well have a bee following me. <laughs> That's funny. I've got honey in my tea, and the bee came to my tea. Um, anyway, yeah. So the thing is, if you try to force your opinions on someone, right? One of two things are going to happen. Either they're going to rebel, right? And you win temporarily, or you lose and then they force their opinions on you. I don't like either of those options. I would rather live with someone with whom I disagree, but at a high level we agree in the fact that we support Western civilization. And we want the whole world to have that opportunity, if possible. I would rather be with you than be with someone who agrees with me on all the details but wants to force the view on everyone else. So that makes me, I guess, anti-authoritarian before anything. And that is what seems to be the most underreported thing in Milo's book thus far. Yeah, see, so reparations are a form of hijacking. So they, in one way they are. In one way they are, yeah. And I won't talk about it here because if we do, we'll get stuck on it and we won't get through this book, White People Freed the Slaves. This is also true. This is, these are all half-truths, right? So there's, there's always another side to that story. But those, I completely agree with all of those. Government meathead slaves. Yeah. So, you know, for example, a lot of people on my side know these things and yet they still don't agree that there should be anything less than reparations. And you've got to ask yourself why. But we won't, I won't get into that. I agree with everything you said and yet I still haven't changed my uh, opinion on that. And But the point is it's not actually important because I would rather live with you and disagree on that and talk about it. But we can't do that until our society is, is basically safe again, right, where we can actually coexist this is really what we've got to get to so um, and actually that's a perfect example actually where where you and I can now get along and say yeah I agree but you're wrong <laughs> I wouldn't say that I would say it's more complex than 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 one side of the argument so everything that Patriot just said was was dead on like I completely agree with that but there's more information but I choose not to discuss it at this point because I think there are greater concerns. <laughs> you know, there are people preaching to murder homosexuals and destroying the name of moderate Muslims who many of many Muslims are homosexual. You know, and they're getting slaughtered by the Iranian government. They're getting hung. I saw a hanging as, and I I, I don't want people to see hangings, but at the same time, it's almost like you can't not see it. Um, when you see someone being hung for being gay and struggling for life and then they look dead and then like 10 seconds later they they reanimate and keep struggling for life again and they're sort of their bodies jerking unconsciously and that's not a bad joke I mean, I mean that seriously that they're almost they're unconsciously jerking to try and stay alive and then you see you know these maniacs hold their bodies down to your connection sucks. Oh, sorry to hear that, sir, for babe. Anyway. So the other thing in Milo's book is that he, he, he labels people as liberals who are his enemies. And I want to try and fight against that in any capacity possible. Because true liberals don't hate that. True liberals find many things Milo says abhorrent and yet res completely support his right to say everything he wants to say. You want to expose things in the light. I would hate seeing that. Yeah, it's it's it's. Uh... All right. So the other thing is the the threats. He's mentioned threats here in the book um, about people stocking books, and for example, Simon Schuster uh, was threatened to actually not uh, uh, have have all of their funding withdrawn by major organisations. And this is my criticism of true liberals. We're not punching down on the fake left. I, I can't stand the authoritarians from any shape or form because what have they done? They made Milo more famous. Milo would not be half as famous if he was just some homeless guy screaming in the street selling erasers from a pencil case. But this, this desire for authoritarians to silence everyone else it's not like a fire. You can't put it out with a freaking cloth. Anyway. 
Now he defends his views. That's right, they made him the underdog, exactly, which is unbelievably stupid. Unbelievably stupid. You know, if I wanted, like I said, you know, it's, anyway. He, now he says, liberals label all speech they don't like as hate speech. I would say fake leftists do that. I, this is my problem. I know it's a word, and I know I'm getting hung up on it. But until I can find a better word to explain, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to call myself a libertarian, because I'm definitely not a libertarian by any stretch. Um, I'm definitely into borders. But I want people to come in. I just want them, I want to know who they are. Um, I'll know it when I see it. Okay, so let me just get up to where I was. It was a really good part of the book I thought I wanted to share with you guys. This was quite interesting. What you say doesn't make sense about reparations. Um, yes, because I haven't told you why I think that. I might have to do another scope on that, I think. And I'll, and I'll show you. You'll be surprised because half of what I will say, you'll actually you'll find, holy shit, I actually do agree with that. You'll see. But I think I'll have to do another scope on that one. I'll, rep I'll make a note. Reparations, 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 reparations. Rep make a scope on reparations. To be on emotions. Mm, yeah, I can see how you would think that. Yeah. Ah, oh, you are more than welcome, Joe's wife. Um, all right, so America's next school shooter won't be a Milo fan. It will be one of the poor, misinformed, nose ring protesters holding a sign that reads, No More Hate. <laughs> that I thought was quite hilarious. Um, yes, I, I, I had a feeling you might, which is why I don't bring it up yet, because there are more important things to discuss. I don't want to, you know, at the moment we're leading a coalition of the willing to support the West. The last thing I want to do is turn my turn our guns on each other I think that would be a disaster <laughs> that would be the end of anything that we're building here um, I think he's absolutely right okay here we go if we are to win the culture war we must fight hard and have a hell of a lot of fun along the way just being self-aware <laughs> what's interesting here and I can see actually how this would trigger the authoritarians he says here that I will teach you how to cause the same sort of mayhem I do in defense of the most important right you have in America, the right to think, do, say, and be whatever the hell you want. American ways of unapologetic free speech, putting facts, fun, and fabulousness, darling, ahead of feelings. My motto was laughter and war. So that's Milo here saying that. Keep reading and you'll find out how you can become as terrifying to the forces of the political correctness and social justice I am, and you won't even have to turn gay. So. The next chapter is called The Art of the Troll. And what's quite interesting is that he defines it in a way I've never seen before. So chapter two defines trolling as a way of playing chess against both your enemy on your left side and your enemy on your right and defeating both at the same time. That's his version of troll. It's, it's, a, it's almost like a four-dimensional trolling. Uh, it's, it's quite ingenious, actually. Um, and... The hard part is reading it if you are not a fan of his thoughts. So it's going to be harder for us on the liberal side. But I tell people you, it's, you must go against your own bias and read it because if you want to learn from it and how to argue back and how to gain credibility with his followers, you really have no other choice. So why not do the hard work? Most left-wingers refuse to accept that they're being trolled. I so agree. Um, is it any wonder, wonder that a fabulous faggot like me is so good at it? Even calling myself a faggot is trolling you. Calling myself a fabulous faggot is trolling you fabulously. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so here's the rule. The rule is always tell the joke the other guy is going to tell about you first. And make it funny. Sort of like Eminem saying, y'all act like you never seen a white person before. Which is actually pretty good. Okay. Um, and he's talking about he's pissed off the, the fake leftist reporters, as well as the alt-right bigot neo-Nazis. Which is quite funny because the, the authoritarians on both sides are quite similar, actually. All right. Now, this is quite interesting. Um, they're silencing him 
and his argument is because they're the only ones telling the truth. That's a heavily persuasive line there. But it says here, you know, they hate us, they ban us from their comment sections, they stamp their feet, they they stroll their trolls. Um, no matter how much they hate us, how much they um, they think jokes on Twitter cause physical pain, we, he's, he says, we are the only ones telling the truth anymore. Um, what people think the truth is, is the reason that Israel and Palestine are so determined to hate each other. Um, it's because even though the truth itself might be knowable, uh, people do not know when they do know it. And that's why you have people who genuinely believe. And that's why the most compelling bad person in a movie is the one who really has good reasons and believes in what they're doing. Uh, and so what Mahler has done, he's framed it in the sense that if you're with him, then you're the one telling the truth, which that there is a cognitive bias right? to, to be aware of. But it works very well. Okay, here we go. Trolls may hurt feelings. He, now he's defining the trolls. So I'm going to skip that bit. In my mastery of trolling, he says, I am surpassed by one man, President Donald J. Trump. Let's see if I upset patriots. Oh, no, he's still here. That's pretty cool. Um, that's part of my tactic, by the way. When I meet new people, I say something which I think they're going to disagree with and then see how long they stick around for. And then I know if they're, they're a true pro-Westerner. Um, I mean, I could be wrong, but that's how I, that's how I do my tests. Um, all right, so in my mastery of trolling, I'm surpassed by one man, President Donald J. Trump. Now, whether you like Trump or not, he is the best troll here, Daddy Trump, yeah. He, he is, when I say the best, that actually sort of might trigger people on my side because they think that means I like. Let's put it this way. He is the most powerful troll, good or bad, I've ever witnessed. And he does it in a way that people don't even realize that they're being trolled. Like that time when he got the media, the, like the candidate Trump was so much fun. Like maybe because I'm not American, it's easier because <laughs> it looked more like a movie. But here is a guy whose job it was to just piss off the media every single second. And that was so much fun. Oh, so good. All right. Um, here you go. He's an effective troll, yeah. So only went after deserving targets. So daddy only went after deserving targets. And this, here you go. You're going to get trolled again by Milo. He goes, the media, Hillary, Bill Clinton, and the disabled. <laughs> Now, what's funny is that hearing hours and hours of Milo's interviews, the word disabled is clearly him trolling. And it's sort of ironic because he just explained the page before that that's how he trolls. Okay. Kardashianism, a.k.a. narcissism, is Kasha rules in America. And if you come across a self-involved enough, journal, journalists will get drawn in. Okay. Now, he's talking about trolling. Okay, here we go. If you spread conspiracy theories such as wage gap, campus rape, rape culture, kill all white men, bathe in male tears, if you close comment sections because you hate being ridiculed uh, by readers who are smarter than you, if you prefer ideology and activism to facts, if you create a hateful atmosphere in which it's okay to laugh at white people but no one else, if you are mean and vindictive and cruel and sociopathic, yet try to close yourself, cloak yourself in the language of tolerance and diversity. If you get people fired, which is what happened to me, for bringing up studies or asking you to justify your claims. If you whip up outrage mobs over innocent jokes on social media. If you see racism and sexism and homophobia and transphobia and every other imaginable kind of bigotry everywhere. And if you insist on warping reality to conform to your delusions, don't be surprised if there's a backlash. <laughs> That was quite insane. Here is a leftist Middle Eastern progressive who defends white people and let, loses his scholarship. Amazing. Amazing. I, it's still, it's still, I find that amazing. Um, as long as facts remain offensive, the age of the troll will never end. Interesting. Um, now, he's, he quotes George Orwell once again. George Orwell, like myself, was a leftist. And yet, 
And yet, George Orwell says this, in times of universal deceit, telling the truth is revolutionary. What's really funny is that I made up my own saying before I even knew about this one, which was, in the age of lies, honesty is revolutionary. How long are we into this scope? Pretty, I don't know. It depends on when I end it. If I end it now, then you, you missed a lot. <laughs> okay, here we go. Free thinkers and cultural libertarians, and I would add true liberals, take heart. Throughout history, there have always been myths and irrationalities to defeat. Truth, like freedom, must be fought for in every generation. I wouldn't define it as truth, but I would define it as freedom. <laughs> freedom must be fought for in every generation. That is very true. That is very true. Um, so, for example, when I was a kid, you know, all of these supposed fake leftists were Marilyn Manson supporters. And I remember liking Marilyn Manson because everyone else told me you're not allowed to. And so I did, right? But now we have these same people bagging out Trump. It doesn't come for free. This is exactly right. It does not come for free. And you will always pay the price. You either pay before or afterwards. And that's why when I say to my man, Patriot, who's Patriot United, who's still here, I say to him, uh, I, I look forward to our talk on where we disagree. But at this point, we have a bigger fight. And so we unite. Today, the best way to rebel is to be conservative. I don't know. I can't do that. But that's fine. He says that. That's his business. I would say, yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a true liberal. And I just get smashed from every side, basically. Uh, leftists are the cultural elites censoring dissident conservatives. I would say that's true. And and what's interesting is that that has been used as the martyrdom required for the rise of people with whom the fake left does not agree. Is the new liberal? <laughs> well, then I must be a leftist. <laughs> and it's most dangerous faggot. Three introductions is enough. Let's begin. All right. So I'm going to read one last part, which I thought was very interesting. Okay. Where are we? Uh, by the way, this is one of the... That's true for Europe, yeah. This is one of the reasons that I say Milo is on the left. We are taking over. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. I spent my youth in drug-saturated nightclubs in London, losing my virginity in interracial fivesomes with drag queens, experimenting with every depraved form of escapism I could find. And I listen to a lot of Mariah Carey, Marilyn Manson, and Rage Against the Machine. That, to me, is a 100% progressive liberal leftist. Um, and that's, that's, that's fine with me. That's exactly where I am. But I think the authoritarianism is what's pushed people to want <laughs> to wanna unite with, with conservatives, which is what I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that anyone who is liberal in terms of their view, yeah. Oh, who doesn't love Mariah Carey? My God. Well, the original, not, not the current one. Hey, Sab Sab. Um, all right. Here we go. So in the past, <laughs> deceit by fake left. It, this is the part that I read last night and I thought I wanted to share with you guys. In the past, the left was a champion of blue collar workers against the managerial big business classes. If you want to know what I think as a true liberal, that's that's my exact position. That comes before anything except free speech. Hello. So I'll say it again. The left in the past, according to Milo, was a champion of blue collar workers against the managerial big business classes. Okay. Jobs, pay and decent living standards for ordinary citizens were the priorities. And this is why I said, this is why I said, thank you, Trump would win. I said this two years ago. I said Trump would win. And one of the reasons was that the working class, for whom I have nothing but love and adulation, the stubble is back. Yeah, it keeps coming back. The stubble is stubborn. Uh, 
these people were going to vote for Trump in droves. Milo's from the UK. He is from the UK. Okay. A few leftists, here we go, a few leftists, as he calls them, Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn, continue this tradition. And that is probably why I was a massive Sanders fan and why Trump was the next best thing, I guess. Um, and he was he was inevitable. Trump was inevitable, as we've said in many other scopes. And I've, and I've predicted this on Facebook many times. You can go there and have a look. Okay. What's interesting... <laughs> Joe's wife. I wonder if this is mainly for an American viewpoint. Probably. Probably. They are notably significantly older than most other left-wing politicians. There is something about that. It seems that it has skipped a generation. They are also loathed by much of the establishment. Those workers have always been conservative in family life. Old hippies. Yeah, I can see that. Like, you know, for example, being... You know, maybe loving the family, but being socially, you know, tolerant and accepting of others. Those people are probably closer closer to where, where I sit. I would say they're more middle, middle of the road, I guess. They're, they're a mix. Maybe you could call them classical liberals, I guess. All right, so now what he, call, he calls it the mainstream left. I call it the fake left. Um, so he, this is quite interesting. The vote. All right, that was my alarm, time to go. The voters, right, the industries that employed their voters have largely disappeared, but the voters did not go anywhere. Indeed, as voters in old working class heartlands entered economic crises, the left should have been more attentive to their concerns. And a lot of them actually are. Tulsi Gabbard is quite brilliant when it comes to the concerns of the worker. But the party has certainly, the Democratic Party was infected by a disease and it doesn't take much for a disease to infect. You know, if one person has the cold in a crowd of 100, you keep that crowd in that room long enough, they're all going to have the cold, right? It's a virus that spreads quite quickly. Instead, leftists, fake leftists, as I call them, choose to ignore the former working class, massive disaster, and turn to a very different electoral coalition. Latte sipping, metropolitan voters, fairy tale dwelling anti-war activists what he calls ugly women <laughs> which is trolling and minorities yeah I, i've heard all of the it's called obamitis <laughs> yeah i would agree with you on that i would agree obama was an ideologue so that 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 part was very disappointing um yeah, he had a 92% success rate in his businesses, though. Um, but above all, he's a hypnotist, which I've said before. Free latte and open borders. Yeah. Well, you see, what I've noticed after studying at that scholarship is that these people never see minorities. They never see immigrants. They don't live like I live growing up in a working-class immigrant neighborhood. They don't know anything. And so all of this stuff that they see, like beheadings and whatever, it's all like a fairy tale to them. And in my opinion, if I had my way, they wouldn't be allowed to vote. <laughs> well, they'd probably say the same about us. Um, but what will happen is they'll be the last to disappear. They'll just leave the country. Yeah. They'll either leave the country or just remain in their gated communities. Uh, this is what will happen. Anyway, i got to go, but it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you all. I love all of your opinions, especially when they disagree. I love that more. I'm not a fan of an echo chamber. Do you live in the States? I do not. I live on the other side of the world where it is now beautifully sunny while everyone else is about to go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But then, I mean, and then you have the problem of who decides who knows what. Always pleasured by you. Hey, hey. <laughs> Pull rice wing money from government. Right wing, right wing people from government. Damn. Mm. Yeah, that was good. All right. Well, always a pleasure, guys. Now, you have a beautiful day, all of you. Liberals, conservatives, everyone. I don't care. You are all lovers of freedom, lovers of the West, lovers of tolerance and peace. 
this is what matters. And if you don't like peace, I will bring it to you by force. <laughs> All right. Yeah, pro-West brothers and sisters. See ya. Morning, night.